Today we are going to discuss about analog multipliers. An analog multiplier produces an output voltage V out which is proportional to the product of two inputs Vx and Vy. That is V out is equal to K into Vx Vy. Where this K is the scaling factor or the proportionality constant. Then there are various methods available for performing analog multiplication. As an example, here we are going to consider three of such methods. First consider the logarithmic summing technique. This is the arrangement for multiplication using logarithmic summing technique. Here this Vx and Vy are the inputs and this Vx and Vy are converted to their logarithmic equivalents by using this log converters. Okay. So here we will get that natural log of Vx and here we will get that natural log of Vy. Then that two values are added together by using this summing junction. Okay. Hence here we will get natural log of Vx plus natural log of Vy. And we know that ln Vx plus ln Vy is equal to ln of Vx Vy. Okay. Hence here now we have this ln of Vx Vy. Then this value is passed through this anti-logarithmic converter. And hence at the output of the anti-logarithmic converter we will get that ln inverse of this ln Vx Vy and that is equal to Vx Vy. Okay. Hence we will get the output as Vx Vy and we can see this output is the product of these two inputs Vx and Vy. Let's now consider the second method which is a simple multiplier using an emitter coupled transistor pair. This is the circuit of an emitter coupled transistor pair. Then to know how this circuit works as a multiplier, first we need to derive the equations for output currents IC1 and IC2 in terms of this differential input V1. Okay. Then for the derivation of these equations, first we will consider a general emitter coupled transistor pair circuit. Okay. And we will derive the IC1, IC2 equations for this circuit. And then by using that equations, we will write the IC1, IC2 equations for this circuit. Okay. So consider this general emitter coupled transistor pair circuit. Here instead of that differential input, two separate inputs are applied. To the base of Q1, V1 is the input and to the base of Q2, V2 is the input. Okay. Then this IE1 is the emitter current of transistor Q1 and IE2 is the emitter current of transistor Q2. Then we can write the equation for the emitter current IE as IE is equal to IS into E raised to VBE divided by VT. We can obtain this equation by using our diode current equation. We know the diode current is equal to ID is equal to IS into E raised to VD divided by eta VT minus 1. Okay. And from this we can write ID is equal to IS into E raised to VD divided by eta VT minus IS. And we know this IS is the saturation current which is very small value and hence we can neglect this value and hence we will get ID is equal to IS into E raised to VD divided by eta VT and this VD is the voltage across the diode and ID is the current that flows through the diode and this eta is a constant and it depends upon the material used to fabricate the diode. And this eta is equal to 1 for germanium and silicon for high values of diode current. And hence here we will consider this eta as 1. Then when we consider this saturation current, if two diodes are matched diodes, then the saturation current will be same for those diodes. And here we are considering matched transistors in our circuit. And hence this IS will be same in all the equations that we are going to write. Then by using this equation we can write the emitter current equation for the transistor. When we consider a transistor we know that transistor consists of two PN junctions. Consider that emitter base junction then the current IE can be given by IE is equal to IS into E raised to VBE divided by 
VT. That VBE is the voltage across that emitter base junction. Okay. Then we also know the emitter current is approximately equal to the collector current. So this IE is also equal to IC and hence we can write the equation for IC by using this equation for IC is also equal to IS into E raised to VBE divided by VT. Okay. Now consider this diagram. Here we can see this IEE is equal to IE1 plus IE2 and this IEE is our bias current. Then we can write the equation for IE1 by using this equation. Then we will get IE1 is equal to IS into E raised to VBE1 divided by VT. Then we can write the equation for IE2 as IE2 is equal to IS into E raised to VBE2 divided by VT. Okay, let's now consider that equations. So we have IE1 or IC1 is equal to IS into E raised to VBE1 divided by VT and IE2 is equal to IC2 and that is equal to IS into E raised to VBE2 divided by VT. And as I said earlier from the figure IEE is equal to IE1 plus IE2. Now we are going to calculate the equation for IE1. Then to calculate the equation for IE1, we need to divide this equation 7 by using IE1 on both sides. Okay, so here we will get IEE divided by IE1 that is equal to 1 plus IE2 divided by IE1. Okay, then substitute the equations for IE2 and IE1. What is the equation for IE2? It is IS into E raised to VBE2 divided by VT. And the equation for IE1 is IS into E raised to VBE1 divided by VT. Okay. So hence we will get IEE divided by IE1 is equal to 1 plus IS into E raised to VBE2 divided by VT divided by IS into E raised to VBE1 divided by VT. Then we can cancel this IS from numerator and denominator and we can take this E raised to VBE1 divided by VT to the numerator. Hence it will become E raised to minus VBE1 divided by VT and then we can write that as 1 plus E raised to VBE2 minus VBE1 divided by VT or we can write this one as E raised to minus VBE1 minus VBE2 divided by VT. Okay. Hence we will get IEE divided by IE1 is equal to 1 plus E raised to minus VBE1 minus VBE2 divided by VT. Then from this we can write the equation for IE1 as IE1 is equal to IEE divided by 1 plus E raised to minus VBE1 minus VBE2 divided by VT. Okay. And this one is also equal to IC1. Okay. Then similarly we can calculate the equation for IE2 also. For the calculation of IE2 we need to divide this equation 7 by using IE2. Okay. Hence when we divide this equation by using IE2 we will get IEE divided by IE2 is equal to IE1 divided by IE2 plus 1. Okay. So uh, this 1 plus IE1 divided by IE2. So when we compare that with this one here we have IE2 divided by IE1. But for the calculation of IE2 the equation will be IEE divided by IE2 is equal to 1 plus IE1 divided by IE2. Okay, hence for IE2 calculation, this one will come in numerator and this one will come in denominator. And hence here, instead of this one, we will get E raised to VBE1 minus VBE2. Okay, hence uh, instead of this equation for IE2, we will get IEE divided by 1 plus E raised to plus VBE1 minus VBE2 divided by VT. Let's consider that equation. Uh, so, IE2 will be IEE divided by 1 plus E raised to VBE1 minus VBE2 divided by VT. And this one is equal to IC2. 
2. So when we write the equation for this IE1 and IE2, when we write the equation for IE2, here the exponential term is positive. E raised to plus VB1 minus VB2 divided by VT. And when we consider the equation for IE1, here this exponential term is negative. Okay, here we can see it is E raised to minus VB1 minus VB2 divided by VT. Okay, so for this IE1 current, this exponential term is negative and for this current, that exponential term is positive. Now, by using that IC1 and IC2 equations for our general emitter coupled transistor pair, we can write the IC1 and IC2 equations for this emitter coupled transistor pair. Okay, the general equation for IE1 was IEE divided by 1 plus E raised to minus VB1 minus VB2 divided by VT. And when we consider this circuit here, the V1 voltage is applied between base of Q1 and base of Q2. The positive of V1 is applied to the base of Q1 and the negative of V1 is applied to the base of Q2. Okay, hence VBE1 minus VBE2 is equal to V1. Okay, hence we can write the equation for IE1 as that IE1 also equal to IC1 is equal to IEE divided by 1 plus E raised to minus V1 divided by Vt. Okay, then when we consider the equation for IE2, our general equation was IEE divided by 1 plus E raised to VBE1 minus VBE2 divided by Vt. Okay, that exponential term is positive. Okay, then as we said earlier, here the V1 voltage plus of the V1 is applied to the base of Q1 and negative of the V1 is applied to the base of Q2. Hence, VBE1 minus VBE2 is V1. Okay. Hence, we can write that IE2 equation as IE2 and that is equal to IC2 and that is equal to IEE divided by 1 plus E raised to V1 divided by Vt. Okay. So, these are the equations for the output currents IC1 and IC2 in terms of this differential input voltage V1. Okay. When we compare these two equations, the only difference is that in the equation of IE1, this exponential term is negative and in the equation of IE2, that exponential term is positive. Okay. Now, the difference between two output currents is given by delta IC is equal to IC1 minus IC2. And when we consider that equations for IC1 and IC2, in that equations IEE is common. So, we can take that IEE outside and then we can write IEE into 1 divided by 1 plus E raised to minus V1 by Vt minus 1 divided by 1 plus E raised to V1 by Vt. Okay. Then this 1 divided by 1 plus E raised to minus V1 by Vt minus 1 divided by 1 plus E raised to V1 by Vt is tan H V1 divided by 2 Vt. The hyperbolic tan function of V1 divided by 2 Vt. Okay. So this one can be replaced by this tan H V1 by 2 Vt. And hence, we can write delta IC is equal to IEE into tan H V1 divided by 2 Vt. Then, when the differential input voltage V1 is very much less than Vt, we can approximate this tan H V1 divided by 2 Vt as V1 divided by 2 Vt. Okay. Hence, when the differential input voltage V1 is very much less than Vt, we can write this IEE tan H V1 divided by 2 Vt is equal to IEE into V1 divided by 2 Vt. Hence, we will get delta IC is equal to IEE into V1 divided by 2 Vt. In this situation, this current IEE is the bias current for the emitter coupled pair. And if the current IEE is made proportional to a second input V2, then we can write IEE is equal to K0 into V2 minus VBE or Then by substituting this equation in this equation, we will get delta IC is equal to K0 into V2 minus VBE on into V1 divided by 2VT. Okay. 
and here in the place of i e e actually we are using a current mirror circuit and we know for a current mirror circuit if the input voltage to that current mirror circuit is v2 we can represent that constant current by using this equation okay so let's now consider that arrangement so that arrangement is shown in this figure this is a simple modulator using a differential amplifier here we can see that i e e section is replaced by using this current mirror circuit and this v2 voltage is applied as input to that current mirror section okay so when we consider that equation again here we can see this current delta ic is proportional to the product of v1 and v2 okay so this output current delta ic is proportional to the product of v1 and v2 and if we convert this current into a corresponding voltage we will get an output voltage which is proportional to the product of these two inputs v1 and v2 okay the output voltage v out can be generated from delta ic by using two equal valued resistors connected to vcc and by sending ic1 through one resistor and ic2 through the second resistor then this one is a simple modulator circuit constructed using a differential amplifier then it can be used as a multiplier provided v1 is small and much less than 50 millivolt and v2 is greater than vbe on but the multiplier circuit shown in this figure has several limitations the first limitation is that the v2 is offset by vbe on when we consider that equation here we have v2 minus vbe on okay so this v2 is offset by vbe on that is the first limitation then the second limitation is that v2 must always be positive which results in only a two quadrant multiplier operation v2 cannot be negative v1 can be positive or negative but v2 cannot be negative and hence we will get only a two quadrant multiplier operation then the third limitation is that the pan h v1 divided by 2 vt is approximated as v1 divided by 2 vt hence our output is not the actual output it is an approximated output then the first two limitations can be overcome by using a gilbert multiplier cell we will discuss about the gilbert multiplier cell in our next class